Hi, and welcome to Blockchain Future. Today, I wanted to chat about uh, centralized versus decentralized exchanges. Uh, there's a lot of confusion out there about the difference between the two and why we should move um, towards decentralized exchanges. Uh, one of the first things that always seems to come up is uh, there seems to be a lot of, um, and this isn't proven, but there seems to be a lot of manipulation, it seems, with the centralized exchanges. Uh, you'll see uh, the price of something start going up and then one huge sell order comes in that just kind of tanks the price. And um, that's not to say that it's illegal, so to speak. Uh, we have a lot of whales in the market, but um, it, it is a bit concerning. Um, one thing that people don't seem to realize is, is that, um, when you use a centralized exchange, the, the actual trades that are done are really just derivative based, meaning that, um, if you were to trade, um, Bitcoin with another person that is actually not written on the Bitcoin blockchain. It's literally just done through the database that's running on the exchange. Um, so moving to a decentralized exchange would actually be a real on-chain transaction. So I wanted to get into a little bit of the differences between the two, some of the drawbacks of why it's going to take a bit to get decentralized exchanges moving forward. Um, but, um, I believe the future is bright as far as once we do get to decentralized exchanges. So I have, um, a few notes here. I'm going to be jumping around on a few different sites, um, from some research that I did. Um, I just kind of wanted to go over the basics of a centralized exchange and then get into the basics of a decentralized exchange. So let me start here, um, with centralized exchanges intermediaries such as companies act as middlemen in order to facilitate trading on their platform in exchange for providing the service intermediaries collect trading fees in essence centralized exchanges often act as the first point of contact for newcomers that are interested in trading cryptocurrency many individuals seek to have an interface that can connect them to both cryptocurrency trading and the real economy and centralized exchanges provide just that. The operation of centralized exchange is pretty straightforward. If Bob wants to buy five Bitcoins, one of two scenarios can occur. Bob can go to the order book and find an offer that he is willing to accept. Normally a matching algorithm automates this process. And if Bob is willing to buy five Bitcoins at the set asking price, then Bob's buy order will automatically be matched with a corresponding sell order that fulfill his requirements. Bob could also create his own buy order. This allows him to set the terms of his of the trade, specifying terms such as price and quantity. So this shows just the basics. There's really not a lot of difference between the way that crypto exchanges work and some of the other exchanges that are used in the uh, legacy financial industry. Um, one thing I did want to bring up before getting into decentralized exchanges is um, I have here um, the markets for Bitcoin. And as you can see, this is the volume for a bunch of these are a ton of exchanges for, for Bitcoin. Um, and this is volume the last 24 hours. You can see BitMEX, $612 million, um, Coinbean. $381 million, um, et cetera. It just keeps going. Uh, you can see that there are these little asterisks here. And if you scroll all the way down, uh, it does say volume is excluded. So some of the volume is included. Some of it's excluded, um, price volume excluded outlier detected. The reason for this is that there is a lot of uh, what's called wash trading on these platforms. And what that means is that um, a lot of these exchanges kind of falsify their volume in order to make it seem like there's more activity going on um, on their exchanges than there really is. Um, this makes it really difficult to see the true volume of 
uh, the the amount of um, a certain cryptocurrency being traded between um, two people that are trading on a centralized exchange. Now, if these were actually on-chain transactions, they could be audited. It'd be very easy to tell if something weird was going on because everybody can see, even though it's semi-anonymous, everybody can still see if there's just trades going back and forth between two addresses um, constantly. Be like, that's not real. So this is one of the reasons why moving to decentralized exchanges is going to be very important in the future because it will actually take care of a lot of this stuff. Another point that I wanted to bring up is um, the actual number of users that, um, you know, uh, that the actual exchanges that actually have a large number of users, there's only a few of them. Um, and this is from December of 2018, but Coinbase, Binance, uh, Huawei, and OKX um, have over 100,000 users, active users. But if you actually look at the charts here, um, you can see that, um, let's see, Coinbase, Binance. So where's Coinbase on here, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not even seeing it. Do a search. Yeah, 118. It's a, it's an 118th place for volume, 15 million. It's a less than a percent of volume according to coin market cap which i don't really trust but um to each his own so coinbase 118 or 118th place 16.16 percent volume yet they are one of the um, few exchanges here that have over a hundred thousand active users so obviously something is wrong with these other exchanges that are pumping up this volume, uh, which to me kind of falsifies the market. Um, just looking at one more, I'm wondering where Binance is on here. It must be higher. No, Binance is uh, 320. Wait, no, it's, looks like it's up a little bit more. Looks like it's here a couple times. Okay, 115th, um, wait, 74. Looks like my searching was a little off here. Okay, 32, but it's still under percent here as far as volume goes. Um, I'm not seeing it here. Yeah, so uh, less than a percent, you know, the volume is uh, 78 million. Um, it is... Uh, you know, a bit higher, but these other exchanges that are up in the, you know, 381 million for Coinbean, who knows if that's real. Um, and, and this makes it really difficult, especially to get new investors in the market to figure out uh, what's real and what's fake. It, it's just not a good thing, in my opinion. Um, just looking at my notes. So getting into the decentralized exchanges um, and what that means, let me just read over this these points here. Uh, unlike centralized exchanges, their decentralized counterparts do not require intermediaries for their operation. Instead of matching buy orders and sell orders in order to in, or, in an order book, a decentralized exchange operates by matching the people behind those orders and sell orders. For example, if Bob wanted to purchase five bitcoins, he would be directed. He would be directly matched with Alice, who also wants to sell five bitcoins. From there, Bob and Alice can agree to a price and finalize their trade. A pre-programmed matching exchange software facilitates this entire process, so there is no need for an intermediary uh, involvement. So there's no need for a centralized institution to actually set up the trade because this can all be done in a smart contract. The architecture of decentralized exchanges means that there are significant advantages to using them. For example, the absence of an intermediary allows for almost non-existent trading fees. Decentralized exchanges also are also more private. 
centralized exchanges often require personal information and proof of identity. Um, example, passport in order to trade on their platform. A decentralized exchange does not require any disclose of identity with a disclosure of identity only being required to the individual that you are conducting it, the trade with. Lastly, the issue of security is also improved under the decentralized exchange model. Decentralized exchanges do not hold cryptocurrency for users and instead users are connected directly with each other, meaning that you do not have to worry about the security of your cryptocurrency sitting on an exchange. So this is actually one of the, the bigger points. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about the hacks that have happened to all the different exchanges, even recently. Um, I mean, I think somebody died who owned an exchange or, or was holding crypto for people and he didn't give the private keys to somebody. So hundreds of millions of dollars were lost. Um, there's crypto that's stolen from exchanges all the time. Um, I'm sure most of you know this, but if you do not hold your private keys, you do not own the crypto. And this also comes back to um, when you actually have your crypto on a pri on a centralized exchange, until you actually withdraw that withdraw that crypto from that exchange to a real, um, just say Bitcoin, if it's Bitcoin, a real Bitcoin wallet, um, that Bitcoin really doesn't exist. Well, I mean, in essence, it it exists um, on the on the centralized exchange, but until it's moved, for example, if you have a ledger or a treasure, if until you move it to one of those wallets or a paper wallet, um, and you actually see that transaction on um, on a block explorer, then it does not exist in in my opinion. Um, you have to hold your private keys um, to to hold the the Bitcoin. It's it'd be the same as uh, you do not own gold uh, until it's actually in your safe and you physically have it in your hand. Uh, Bitcoin was created so that we actually control the uh, the um, the destiny of, of this money. We we can hold the private keys, which means we have complete control over what happens to that cryptocurrency. Um, so the, uh, the, the security aspect of actually not having to worry about the cryptocurrency sitting on an exchange and not having access to it is one piece. This does bring up other questions like, um, what happens if you lose your crypto? I mean, there's not an institution that's necessarily involved, so... Um, it'd be like if you lost anything else. Um, maybe in the future there will be decentralized exchanges that have some sort of insurance, but the whole idea behind these exchanges is that personal accountability. You are responsible for, for your, your own crypto and you will actually be able to trade it and exchange it with other people just like if you were to meet in person. Um, that's, that's the essence of it. The problem, one of the bigger problems right now with um, with these exchanges, and I have a few over here. This is Ether Delta, which is a decentralized exchange. Most of them are built on Ethereum because Ethereum is a decentralized platform that allows you to build this type of stuff. Um, there are others on some of the other smart contract platforms, but obviously Ethereum is the most popular smart contract platform at the moment. So here's Ether Delta, and this is IDEX. Um, IDEX is one of the more popular ones. Problem is, is that liquidity is very low, um, um, so it's very hard to actually get orders actually filled. And they are crypto to crypto only. I mean, they they are decentralized exchanges. So in order to get money into the system, if you wanted to go from fiat to to Bitcoin or fiat to Ethereum, you would have to go through a centralized exchange anyway, or another on-ramp into crypto. So if somebody's already there and they're on a centralized exchange doing that, they might as well do the other parts of it that they need. But as we move into a world that is more 
focused on cryptocurrencies and people are, are receiving crypto for payments of things or they're getting paid in crypto, you will see um, decentralized exchanges actually become more and more popular, especially as the scaling issues with Ethereum actually speed up a bit and they get more speed because speed is another issue. Um, it, a lot of these decentralized exchanges rely on the speed of of the Ethereum blockchain. And since it's not as fast as it wants to be, um, there is some slowness there as well. Um, there are some solutions like 0x, which actually um, is working on off-chain solutions to speed things up. Um, and uh, a few other things that slipped my mind. But Ethereum has things like sharding and um, some upgrades that actually just happened, I believe, a few days ago um, to address the scaling issues. So scaling, I won't, don't believe, will be a problem in the near future. But um, it, the other issues like uh, liquidity and um, bringing, um, you know, getting the, the fiat to crypto, um, transfers or at least getting people on board into crypto from fiat is really one of the the issues but i wanted um to show you guys the kind of what is preventing i'm sure you've heard a lot about decentralized exchanges and and why we haven't moved forward with them um i just wanted to go over the differences between them where we are with them and um, obviously the issues with centralized exchanges and the issues with decentralized exchanges, but why we will be moving towards decentralized exchanges in the future and um, why they're important. Um, just like I said, with the, the volume issues here and the fake volume issues. So um, yeah, that's all I got. Um, I, uh, I believe that we will we're still very early as far as this stuff goes, but I, I think that um, once these decentralized exchanges really start picking up steam, a lot of these um, these trading issues that we've been seeing will will go away because um, people won't be able to game the system like they are right now with decentralized exchanges. Thanks. Have a good one.